I hear the term entry level, for some reason my mind immediately thinks low quality or cheap in a negative sense. But that's not and shouldn't be the case. In the high-end luxury watch world, entry level typically, typically equates to less complications and less precious metal. Take this FP Journe Chronomet Blue. It's the independent brand's entry level mechanical piece, but it's one of the highest quality watches I've ever personally handled. In fact, it spent a week on my wrist, keeping me company around LA, so let me tell you why this entry-level watch is so damn great. Journe Chronomet Blue is a 39mm watch that's quite radical in design when compared to other, more traditional luxury timepieces. We actually ran a 3 on 3 story a while back comparing it to the Vacheron Constantine Patrimony and the Alanga Unsuna Saxonia. Those two watches are obvious dress watches in my opinion, but the CB, yeah I'm calling it that from here on, is definitely not. My initial thought was to categorize it as a dress watch, but as soon as I slapped it on my wrist, I realized this is something that I can wear daily. Literally with anything besides workout or adventure gear. So I guess it can be dressy and casual. It's a versatile watch. You see, the case isn't gold, it's tantalum, more on that later, and the dial isn't white, silver, black, or any other dressy traditional color. The dial is blue, and when I say blue, I'm talking like super duper blue. And it's not just an extreme hue of blue, but it's highly reflective, almost mirror-like. In person, it's absolutely stunning, but recording it for you all to see what I'm talking about was very difficult. Out in the real world, in lower lit situations, the dial appears a deep, dark blue, almost black in some instances. But when light hits the watch directly, you get a bright pop of iridescent glowing blue that I really didn't expect to see based off of the images and videos I saw online. I like flashy things, so this tasteful surprise of light really makes me smile. It gives me more excuses to stare at the dial and shimmy my wrist around to see all the different ways the light affects this little work of art. On the dial, we also get slightly off-white numerals, no, not Fotina, just a tasteful light cream color that are printed concentrically inside a minutes chapter ring. What's special about the numbers to me is how the 7 and 8 shrink ever so slightly to fit around the second subdial. I really don't like when watch brands cut numbers off. It just bothers me, and the CB does a great job of solving this issue. At first glance, it wasn't even noticeable. The hour and minute hands are what you'd see in almost all FP Journe watches, and the offset second subdial breaks the overall symmetry of the dial, which I think is a really good thing. I really like asymmetrical dials, and FP Journe has a lot of them in their catalog. The case of the CV is 39mm in diameter and only 8.3mm thick, with a lug to lug length of 46.6mm. To me, it looks great on my 7 and a quarter inch wrist, and it has a solid heft to it that makes you feel like you're wearing something of worth, which it should, because it's worth a lot of money. The heft is due to the fact that the case is made of tantalum, which I honestly never heard of before hearing about this watch. Tantalum is a dark gray material with blue overtones that has a similar heft to platinum, but doesn't scratch as easily, and is more durable than even steel. It's supposedly a difficult metal to fashion, so big ups to Francois Paul for using it for his watch's case. Overall, the case design is rather simple, which I think is a good thing because it brings all the attention to that stellar blue dial. I mean, the watch is called the Chronomet Blue for a reason, and the case complements the blue dial perfectly. 
Now that I'm done gushing over the outside of the watch, let's talk about the equally impressive movement, the Caliber 1304. It was designed and made in-house by F.P. Jorn, and I hate that I have to clarify this nowadays, but in this instance, when I say in-house, it was truly designed and made in-house. A lot of brands nowadays use that term a little bit too freely in my opinion because a lot of times they're not truly made in-house. Okay, mini rant complete, look at this gorgeous movement. Unlike most watch movements that I've encountered, this one is primarily made of 18 karat rose gold and it is a joy to stare at. Spec wise, it's got not one, but two mainspring barrels that help it achieve a respectable 56 hours of power reserve, and it's also a manually wound movement, so no pesky rotors blocking the view, and it doesn't hack, which makes it hard to set a reference time. This was literally my only initial gripe about this watch, but it's something that surprisingly didn't bother me at all during my week wearing it. Visually, the movement has such incredible depth, and I love it. A lot of movements appear like they're about to burst out of their sapphire crystal case back, but not the Caliber 1304. That depth is a result of the cavernous space in between the large bridge on the crown side that holds up the barrels and the balance cock. And nope, that valley isn't bare, it's home to a gorgeous main plate with a mainly barley corn guilloche finishing and some perlage under and near the balance cock and balance spring. The bridges are beveled throughout and decorated with stripes, and it's just an overall magnificent movement to look at. I love this watch's dial, but I could also wear this watch upside down for the rest of my life and still be content. I just wouldn't know the time. So I've been rather lucky. In the last four or five years, I've had the opportunity to handle quite a few watches from a lot of brands in most price ranges. Sure, there's more complicated watches, watches with more precious metals, watches with diamonds, and some with more innovative movements. I've fallen in love with a lot of them, and I disliked quite a few too. But this F. Pijorn is probably my favorite watch of them all. It's not too dressy, and it's not another hyped up sports watch. It's an odd, perfect balance of quirky, simple, and still complicated. It's a true work of modern art that just does it for me. And remember, this is only Francois Paul's entry-level watch for $37,400, of course. Still, it's freaking incredible.